Hello, uh, my name is John Amakawa and I'm the creator of the Heart Mountain AR app. Um, the app um, is essentially a, uh, a way for visitors to be able to walk through the Heart Mountain site and, uh, and learn about the site the, um, and the experiences of the, uh, the survivors and the people who um, were here. Um, basically, uh, the, the app uh, works by um, opening the app and um, walking over to a series of 16, I believe 16, um, special AR target signs. Uh, and when you look at the target sign with the app open, and the, uh, the app will turn on the camera, um, the app will display uh, animations, recreations of the, um, of the camp. Um, basically, this is, this is kind of a new uh, format for interpreting historical sites. It's really only been available, um, I would say, the past eight, eight years or so. Um, and uh, really is a, is a um, in interesting new way of interpreting locations where uh, not much visibly remains. Um, and so um, this will allow us to, to be able to kind of recreate the locations of barracks and um, other kinds of camp infrastructure and also tell some of the stories of the, um, the people who were here and the survivors. So I've been working with uh, augmented reality and uh, virtual recreations of historical sites uh, for, I would say, 15 years um, and with augmented reality um, for I'd say the about, the, about seven years um, and uh, I first started working mainly actually with uh, African-American sites, um, sites involving uh, the history of slavery, Underground Railroad um, and uh, with those sites you have a very similar um, situation to Heart Mountain where you would have a historical landmark um, that you know that, that tells that that relates to a very important, significant um, um, part of American history. But when visitors had come to that uh, to those locations, um, it was very difficult to uh, to see or kind of understand because there wasn't uh, really much to see. And so, um, but at the same time, the locations themselves are very important. And, um, and there's also um, informa quite a bit of information uh, that visitors and uh, visitors to the sites can get from just being there, experiencing the place, seeing the terrain. Um, and so, so I did a number of projects with, uh, with the history of African American. And actually it was, I was talking with a historian at the Abraham Lincoln home uh, about, you know, other areas that might be interesting to interpret, in, interesting to interpret with um, augmented reality. He had initially mentioned, oh, you know, um, uh, Japanese American internment camps, Manzanar um, would be, you know, would be uh, an interesting topic. The project actually has uh, personal, uh, uh, I, I would say personal significance to me as uh, a Japanese American myself. Um, my family was not uh, incarcerated. Um, my father, I guess from what I've learned more recently, I am what you would call a Shin Nisei. Uh, my father came in 1961 as an exchange student. And um, uh, so, you know, I actually, I, I knew a little bit about the history of, um, of the internment camps, but not as much as I realized uh, since getting involved with this project at Heart Mountain. And, um, and this, you know, this, this, so I had this, you know, this, this personal connection, um, knowing also that, you know, if I, 
if I had lived at that time, I myself, you know, and I had been in that that area of the West Coast, I myself would have been sub subjected to this. So, you know, the, I definitely feel this this personal um, um, personal connection to it. Um, and also, I mean, as I've worked on this this project, um, I've really been very moved by just the stories and the experiences of the people here. Um, just looking at the, you know, some of the artwork that was created here, it was really, um, really incredible and, and moving. And and um, and I, you know, I could also kind of relate to um, with just with my own uh, experience in Japan and and, um, um, and with Japanese culture. And I have to say that you know I. I never really had, um, I never uh, quite understood or had much knowledge about the Japanese American experience, or really, I'd have to say, the appreciation for it until um, I started working on this. The AR app consists of um, a series of 16 stops throughout the, the whole site. And, um, and at each stop, essentially, um, we we not only try and kind of show how things look in the context of Heart Mountain today. I mean, that's I think what what is probably one of the most powerful things about um, augmented reality is uh, it bring we you know we can we can try and recreate um, events, um, buildings, uh, experiences. But at the location, so um, so we can we can really kind of um, bring this all together, and um, and so so anyway, uh, through the, you know as a visitor walks through the site, we have 16 different locations that essentially tell uh, the story uh, or, or tell some um, eyewitness account, um, and so um, and of course. There's so many more stories than we could possibly have, you know, have co covered for just this, um, and hopefully we'll we'll be able to tell more stories in the future, also. But we, um, you know, for this, uh, for I, what I would say maybe is this this run of the um, of the app, we selected stories that would um, give visitors some insight to a you know different aspect of life or the experience here. So we have, for example, story, some of the stories uh, of the survivors who were children there, right? So we see through the eyes, um, uh, for example, uh, Shigyabu is, one of the uh, is in one of the stories and talks about his memories and experience of the, um, of the swimming pool. Um, we also tell uh, the story. Uh, we also talk about there's a there's a site that gets into the um, the farming and the root cellar, um, and um, uh, the, the 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 farming that was done here. Um, there's also um, we also tell the story of somebody who was not not in the camp but a, an area resident who witnessed. Um, uh, camp incarcerees um, leaving the camp. This was, uh, of course, Ladanazal. Um, now, uh, one of the in, in, one of the really interesting things, actually, in working on this project, in uh, comparison to some of my other uh, previous projects um, involving the Underground Railroad and slavery, was um, the fact that we were able to actually use the voices of the survivors themselves, right? Because in many of the, in all my previous projects, um, you know, in some cases we have um, their voices in writing, right? But um, not actual audio. And I think one of the one of the powerful things about this is that um, you know we still have survivors today um, who experience this, and we were able to. And actually, in most of the um, uh, most of the stories we use. <clears throat> We use the voices of the uh, uh, of the of the survivors in telling these stories. Um, uh, we also tell the story of uh, of um, two Boy Scouts 
um, Norm Mineta and Alan Simpson, who, uh, who met in the camp during your Boy Scout Jamboree, um, and kind of tell that, that story also. So, um, you know, one of the things I think um, I thought about when doing this is um, some of the other stories that would be really great to, uh, to cover in the future, um, some of the ones that come to mind. Um, the No-No Boys, um, you know, and the, uh, um, the, uh, the story of you know, resistance to the draft, um, uh, or another one would be the, uh, um, the volunteers and also the draftees um, into the U.S. Uh, Army. Um, doing something on the, uh, the mess halls um, and the, you know, the experience in the mess halls. Uh, doing something on Estelle Ichigo, uh, you know, and her uh, creating paintings while, while here, depicting life <clears throat> in the camps. Um, uh, the Zen monk also, who um, I had heard um, chanted sutras, um, I think every day or something while he was here. I think all of these could be really compelling uh, stories that, um, that could also, you know, someday be included in this. So.